Hi everyone. In this video, we're looking at how to use the Stripe button element. This useful e-commerce element allows you to add a payment button for a product or service without the need to implement a full e-commerce shop. For simple products, this element can save a lot of time. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. OK, let's begin. The Stripe button element is easy to add and configure. There are two aspects to using this element. One is to add and configure the button on your site, but to get it to work you also have to connect it to your Stripe account. Let's go through the process. As an example, I have imported the music pre-built here. And let's imagine that the band wants to sell their latest album from the home page without having to implement a full e-commerce store. So I'm going to remove the latest album button here on the home page and replace it with the Stripe payment button. It's in a nested column, so I will just have to edit that and now I can delete the existing button. I'll add the Stripe button, and I will move it back to the original position. OK, so let's configure it. Starting on the General tab, I will add the button text. For this example, I will add Buy Our Latest Album. The Stripe button is very basic compared to a full e-commerce store, and so it's probably best suited for digital products. The button Target is the next option, and here I will leave it on Self. This button will open the Stripe payment window and return to the site when cancelled or successful, according to the redirects we will set in a bit. Alignment is next, and for this example this is good as is. The next couple of options are for which URL to redirect to if the payment is successful or the user cancels. These might be a download or a thank you page. For this example though, I'll just redirect users back to the home page. At the bottom of the general tab, are the ubiquitous element visibility and CSS class and CSS ID options. But let's move to the next tab, the payment tab. This is where you configure the product or service you are selling. The first option is the API mode. The default is test, and of course it's a good idea to start in test mode to make sure everything is working before making it live. The next option is collect shipping address, and this would of course be useful for physical products. Let's just leave it on yes so we can see that when we get to the payment section. Product name is the next option, and for this I'll just call it Our Latest Album. Currency is next, and you can choose from any currency here. For me, I'd likely choose Australian dollars. Now we set a product price. Let's sell this album for $20. Quantity comes next, and here I will leave it on 1, but you can specify how many items you are selling with the button. If, for example, you set it to 2, the price would be $40. So you might have one button that says buy 1, and another button that says buy 2. OK, after this is the shipping price. If this was a digital product, you would leave this empty, but for a physical product you could add shipping here. Let's say $5. Tax rate is the last option on this tab, and these are pulled from your Stripe account, so you would have to connect that first to set a different tax rate. For our example, let's leave it on None. OK, let's move to the Design tab. I'm happy with the default colours here, but I can see our button is a bit small, so let's change the size to X large. And at the bottom, in the icon option, I might go to Brands and search for Stripe. And I will use this one here. And I'll set it to the right. OK, that's a decent looking button. I could of course add an animation on the Extras tab, but instead I'm going to go back to the Payment tab and click on the Global Options icon on the API Mode option. This takes me to the Stripe button Global Options, where I can connect my Stripe account. I'll leave the API Mode on Test here, and I will enter my Stripe test secret key. And that connects with my Stripe account. To find out more about the Stripe API mode, check out the Stripe API guide, linked in the option description here. OK, so once that's connected, we are ready to test. I will save the changes. And now let's open the page on the front end. So now I'll just click the purchase button. It talks to Stripe for a little bit and then opens the payment window. Here we can see we are in test mode with one of my Stripe accounts and we have the product name, the price we set and the shipping cost. On the right is where the user would make payment. I'll just add an email address in the first field and under this we would add our shipping details. I'll just add a name and then an address. If I just start typing it, it picks up my address but we can also just add it manually. Next comes payment details. For testing purposes, Stripe offer a range of credit card numbers we can use. 
So I will just add a number here. Then I will add a valid future date and a random three digit CVC. For more details on this testing process, see the link listed below the video. Under this is a checkbox to confirm the billing address is the same as the shipping address and an option for secure one click checkout. I will leave that and instead just click pay. It processes the test payment and as it's successful, it now redirects us to the URL we added in that option. Okay, once you know your button works, the last thing to do is to make it live. Back in the global options, I would paste my Stripe Live secret key in and set the global option to live. The reason there is also an API mode on the actual element is so that once you have a live button, if you make another one, you can just set that specific element to test while leaving the other buttons live. You could of course also copy a button to other pages. This one might be pasted into the most recent album on the albums page, or other buttons could be made for the other albums. If you have more complicated products, obviously a full e-commerce shop would be a better option, and Avada is fully integrated with WooCommerce for such a task. But for simple product sales, the Stripe button is a quick and efficient way to sell a product or a service. Try it out. Okay, so that's the Stripe button element. Thanks for watching and let us know in the comments if you've used this on your site. This concludes our video on how to use the Stripe button element. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.